So we're at the top of the crag now, and what we're going to do is affect an abseil down where we're going to retrieve our ropes. The first thing we need to do is free up our ropes so we can abseil on them, but still staying in the system. And what we're going to do is we're going to abseil on these ropes here. What we've got here is a nice in situ sort of like abseil station. So before I clip into them, it's always good just to have a look round and definitely have a look at the back to make sure that the ropes are intact. Although this is a bit green, we've got a, a couple of other ropes that look fairly new. And I'm pretty happy with this. We've got a 10 mil Mayon and it's gonna be um, more than strong enough for what we're gonna use it for. So what I need to do is to clip into the belay with a sling. The most important thing to do is to get this little join out the way. And then I'm going to lark's foot through my belay loop and get this nice and tight. And then I'm going to tie a knot about six inches away. And this is going to be where my belay plate ends up when I'm abseiling. And I'm just going to put another knot here in this situation so that when I clip into this, everything's tight. And the reason that I'm doing this is I've got this really nice, thin Dyneema nylon sling. The problem with Dyneema is it can melt if loaded very quickly. So there is a worry that if I was all the way up here with this loose and fell dynamically to below it, I could actually snap this sling with my body weight. So what I'm doing is making sure I've got it so it's tight and so the load is static rather than dynamic. Okay, Steve, I'm safe on this now, so you can take us off belay. There you go. What I can do now is, because my ropes are on the top of this pile, on top of this pile, what I'm going to do is untie my ropes, and I'm going to thread my ends of the ropes through here, coil the ropes, and then throw them down the cliff. As I'm doing this, Steve is going to make himself safe, so he's going to free up his ends of rope as well. So Steve's just making himself safe here, which means that he can come off this rope and free up the other end of the rope for us. So what we're going to do, we're going to thread these ropes through this mayon, and the reason we're going to use the mayon and not the ropes is that if I put the rope through here and then I pulled 50 meters of rope through I'm actually going to damage this rope and if we want these abseil stations to last a long time it's better if there is a mayon to actually use it sometimes there's a carabiner there um, at a push you might end up leaving one of your own carabiners behind I'm going to thread a rope through and I'm going to tie these ropes together to start off with, with an overhand knot. To get this done properly, what I'm going to do is I pull on each rope coming out of this knot. And I get it nice and neat. And then if I want to belt some braces approach, I can put another overhand knot just above it. And what this overhand knot does is that if it comes over an edge, it pops up like this and it actually runs more freely over an edge than uh, any other knot that we use. So to start off with, what I'm gonna do is discoil some rope and get as much as I can down the crag. But because of the angle of the crag and the wind, if I try and throw the whole rope, it's not gonna reach the bottom. So. I'm going to stop that there, give those ends to Steve to hold, and what I'm going to do now is make a gigantic ball of rope. So 
So I really need to be careful now. I'm going to shout below before I chuck my rope. Give people a second or so to get out of the way, because if that hits them on the head, it's going to hurt. Below! 